Hello everyone, you are listening to Dr. Huma Ibra and today I am here with a very important topic. You will find many videos on YouTube that will practically teach you PNF techniques. But it's very hard for someone to find any way to remember PNF techniques for exam or viva. Students often face difficulties in memorizing and understanding PNF techniques. In this video, you will easily understand and remember PNF techniques and you will never forget them again. At the end of this video, you will have stronger grip over PNF techniques. Okay, if you think that this video is informative, then please press the like button and share it with your colleagues and students so that now no one would face any difficulty in memorizing PNF techniques. Also subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to receive free important updates and lectures. Okay everyone, let's start with an overview. First, I will take an overview of introduction uses, diagonal patterns and sensory cues. Uh, sorry for this disgusting handwriting. Okay, uh, let's talk about the sensory cues. There are four sensory cues, proprioceptive uh, the, that are in joints, uh, to sense position of joints, cutaneous for touch, visual, visualize movements, auditory for command, uh, how you will command your patient. Okay, let's talk about introduction. These are the stretching techniques utilized to improve muscle function and has positive impact in both active range of motion and passive range of motion. These evoke muscular response, improve neuromuscular control and function, and they are functionally based diagonal pattern. Used in stronger muscle groups, PNF is used in stronger muscle groups to evoke uh, or to improve function in weaker muscle group. Talking about uses, uh, stability, muscular strength and coordination, improve muscular strength and endurance, mobility, neuromuscular control and coordination. Okay. Moving towards the pattern, overview of pattern, there are uh, four patterns. Uh, these patterns are used in daily life activities, D1 flexion, D1 extension, D2 flexion, D2 extension for upper limb and lower limb. Diagonal patterns of PNF. Okay. In our daily life, we use all these movements, example flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal rotation and external rotation. Take a piece of food. And put it in your mouth. All the mo all these movements take place for this simple task, including flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal rotation, and external rotation. Okay, moving towards the diagonal pattern for upper limb, shoulder, scapula, elbow, forearm, wrist, and fingers. So first, we'll talk about shoulder D1 flexion pattern. Uh, mnemonic for this is pedal, flexion, adduction, external rotation. Moving towards scapula, that's not much important, but a mnemonic to remember a D1 flexion pattern in scapula is uh, extension, abduction, and upward rotation. Okay, and then in elbow, there will be flexion. Uh, due to flexion in shoulder, there will be flexion in elbow, flexion in wrist, flexion in fingers. And there will be supination in forearm. Uh, in forearm, there are two types of movements, supination or pronation. Uh, in demon flexion, there will be supination. So we have write this smaller s here. Okay, moving towards the D1 extension pattern of shoulder. Uh, the mnemonic for D1 extension pattern of shoulder is EXABIR, extension, abduction, internal rotation, and smaller p is for pronation. In D1 extension, there is pronation and in D1 flexion, there is supination. So, uh, moving towards the scapula, it's D A D -D -R, D-A-D-D-R, depression, adduction and downward rotation. Depression, adduction and downward rotation. Moving towards the elbow, so as there is uh, extension in shoulder, there would be extension in elbow. There would be extension in wrist. There would be extension in finger. Similarly, as in D1 flexion, there was flexion in shoulder. So there would be in elbow. There was flexion in wrist. And there was flexion in fingers. So in D1 extension, uh, there is extension in shoulder. So there will be extension in elbow. There will be extension in wrist. And there will be uh, extension in fingers. And uh, in forearm, uh, this, could be, this would be pronation. 
so it will it will be very easy for you to understand okay so mnemonic for shoulder uh, d1 flexion and shoulder d2 flexion is almost uh, similar but uh, there's difference of abduction adduction and abduction in d1 flexion there was adduction and in d2 flexion there is abduction okay for scapula there is extension abduction and upward rotation again there is flexion in shoulder so there would be flexion in uh, elbow but uh, to remember this remember there is two two is for there would be flexion in two joints and there would be extension in two joints flexion in two joints including shoulder and elbow and flexion uh, and extension in two joints wrist and fingers and there will be radial deviation in wrist uh, in a d1 flexion a d1 extension there would be uh, ulnar deviation in wrist and in uh, 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 d2 flexion there would be radial deviation in wrist and there would be supination so we have write this smaller s here moving towards the d2 extension uh, mnemonic to remember d2 extension uh, extension ad adduction similarly here is abduction and there here would be adduction internal rotation internal rotation p for pronation p for pronation okay same as in d1 extension d a double d r down uh, depression adduction and downward rotation similarly there would be extension into two joints and flexion in two joints extension and extension extension and extension in elbow extension in shoulder and elbow and pronation in uh, forearm and there will be flexion in wrist and flexion in fingers so this is all for diagonal pattern of upper limb let's move towards the diagonal patterns of lower limb okay let's talk about the pnf patterns diagonal patterns of the lower limb here remember that the movement will be opposite in distal joint as in toes opposite to the diagonal pattern if there is flexion there would be extension in toes if there is extension there would be a flexion in toes if there would uh, flexion there would be extension in toes and extension there will be flexion in, in toes so uh, so uh, toes will have always opposite uh, movement okay moving towards the hip d1 flexion there will be flexion adduction and external rotation flexion adduction and external rotation and as there is flexion in hip joint there would be automatically flexion in knee joint also so, so there would be flexion in knee joint in ankle it would be df torsiflexion and inversion in toes it will be opposite di uh, direction movement flexion it would be extension okay moving towards the hip d1 extension pattern extension abduction and internal rotation knees there would be automatically uh, here it is extension in hip so it will be extension in knees also ankle plantar flexion plus eversion toes there will be opposite movement uh, there is extension so there would be flexion hip d2 flexion pattern fabric remember it with fabric flexion abduction and internal rotation as there is flexion in a hip joint so there will be flexion in knee joint also and the uh, ankle joint movement will be dorsiflexion and eversion okay moving towards the toes it will be opposite as, as there is flexion there would be extension moving towards the d2 extension pattern of hip it's extension abduction and external rotation knees it's extension as automatically uh, there is uh, extension in hip joint so there would be extension in knees also ankle there would be plantar flexion and inversion toes flexion opposite direction towards the diagonal pattern so there would be flexion so let's make it more practical with d1 flexion it's for good for eating here brushing other side scratching your back d1 extension good for pushing away d2 flexion drawing your sword d2 extension putting away your sword use chop technique for initiating rolling starts in d1 flexion and in d1 extension the lead arm Use reverse lift, lift technique to break synergy pattern. Arm starts in D2 extension and in D1, D2 flexion where arm is abducted, externally rotated. Elbow extended, wrist extended and fingers extended. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video and remember me in your prayers.